Splatoon 2 is of course a super fun casual pickup game, but the real reason most of us play is for the glory of being the best. After gaining a few tips from my peers and honing my skills from probably too many hours of play, I've compiled a short list of tips that can really help you practice more efficiently and get better in the ranked modes. Find friends. I've said it before on this channel, but one of the most important aspects of Splatoon 2 is community. After you finish the story, you really have no choice but to play with other people, so why not find people you actually like? I have a lot of gaming friends, but none of them have been able to find a Switch yet, so I know how hard it is to find other people to play with. One of the things I've done to find friends is to search Facebook for different groups and communities that either play Splatoon exclusively, or just talk about the Switch. You'd be surprised just how many groups like this there are. Through this method, I actually found a local group in my city dedicated to talking about and playing the Switch together. There's also a lot of people like this on Reddit. It might seem like no one you know wants to play with you, but if you do the research and make an effort, you can definitely find friendly people you actually like to play with online. Choose and know your playstyle. It's good to play around and get a feel for all the different weapon sets in the game, and I definitely recommend you try every weapon once to at least get an understanding for what it is. This being said, when doing ranked battles, you should probably just stick to what you know best, at least initially. This is not the time for practice, and it's important that you know how to utilize every aspect of your set usefully. Once you get the hang of a few different playstyles, you might consider trying to fill a role that you usually find vacant. A lot of teams in ranked battles are fully comprised of close to mid-range carry type weapons, and while these teams can definitely win, it's always beneficial to have a support or a long range class in your game. The more diverse your team is, the harder it'll be for the other team to keep up with what you're doing. Try playing a charger class or a class with more support focused secondary and special weapons a few times at Turf War, and then try it out in ranked battles. Your team will be harder to read, and you might even have fun learning a new skill set. Cover more ground. Covering ground with ink in ranked battles doesn't directly benefit your team in winning the match, but it can still be very beneficial. The enemy team is still hindered by your ink, so it can still play a role in their defeat. If you recognize that the enemy team might be bringing the Rainmaker to a certain spot, make sure that spot is inked before they get there. If the enemy controls the tower and it's coming your way, consider inking the turf beneath the tower's path before it even makes it there to make the upcoming battle just a little more easy. While it might seem obvious, doing this can greatly affect the tide of battle, and also help you gain some special weapon power. I sometimes don't even get to use my special weapon in the game because I only focus on rushing the objective, but keeping this tip in mind will help you stay on top of your game. Break away from the pack. You might have noticed that teams will generally make one line of ink straight to the objective and all swim together to swarm whatever you're trying to do. This generally ends in a mass killing of your entire team. Teamwork is super important in this game, but that doesn't mean you have to stick to each other like glue. When using a long range weapon, consider hanging back and watching the pack rush the objective. Packs of inklings almost double as bait for the other team. By hanging back and watching, you might be able to see the other team trying to get the best of your pack, and then you can snipe them down when they go for the bait. Alternatively, with a close range weapon, it might be smarter to take the longer route to the objective and ink turf on the way. Doing this allows you to flank the other team and maybe even gain a special weapon proc in the meantime. Like I said, teamwork is very important in this game, but sometimes it's better to spread out and move around to keep the enemy team on its toes. Use your map and be aware. This one's sort of hard to get used to, even though it might seem obvious. The X button is easy to reach, and they assign the map to this button for a reason. You should be fluidly checking this map at least every time you die, and a lot more regularly than that even. Using the point sensor secondary can reveal enemy squids on the map, and you can even tell where they are just by looking at where new ink is being sprayed, or even when a teammate dies. It's super easy to pinpoint enemy squids with this system, and being aware of all players on the map at all times can help you plan your route of action and ultimately help your team succeed. So trust me, I know competitive gaming can turn into a real headache sometimes, but it's also one of the most rewarding ways to play. The most important thing to remember is that it is competitive, so there's always going to be someone better than you, but it's probably just because they have more practice. Stay diligent and learn from your mistakes, and I promise you, you will get better at this game. There's nothing quite like the feeling after a five game win streak, and remembering these tips can definitely help you get there. Let me know if you have any suggestions down in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, 
and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This is Max from Max Culture, and thank you so much for watching.